it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. So there is one piece of jewelry in the Pearson world that is the bane of everyone's existence. If you say segment ring, you can get out. Except for don't, please watch the rest of this video. But also, no. And that piece of jewelry is a captive bead ring. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten the question of, I have a captive bead ring, how do I get it out? I have a captive bead ring, how do I get it in? I have a captive bead ring, it's not budging. I get that all the time. I personally don't like captive bead rings because of those very questions, because I too struggle with them. But nevertheless, we still use them. So for today's video, I am going to be offering tips on how to remove captive bead rings as well as how to put them in. I personally find removing them a whole lot easier than putting them back in because that little ball is pain in the you know what. So if you've never dealt with a captive bead ring before, basically what it is, is a little tiny horseshoe that connects to either just a round ball or a bead of some kind, but either way, there are little grooves in there where the ends of the horseshoe can go into, making it a captive bead. For this video, I'm gonna be using the one and only captive bead ring that I still own, cause I've gotten mad at all the other ones and tossed them out. It is a 14 gauge one, so I would only be able to wear it in my conch. I think it would be really pretty in my septum, but my septum's a 16 gauge and I ain't about stretching it. So there are a variety of methods on how to remove captive bead rings, put them in, and it just kind of depends on what your preference is. Some people do it just with their hands. Some people do it with pliers. Some people do it with ring expanders. I've always done it with my hands just because pliers scare me. Also, the only pliers that I own are these big monstrosities. And honestly, it kind of looks like it would take my ear out. So I don't use pliers, but you can if you have smaller ones. I personally would not use big ones like this. So a captive bead ring. Again, you have this horseshoe ring and then you also have this really tiny ass bead that constantly wants to get lost. Like it's so tiny you probably can't see it. How this is supposed to work is you're supposed to take your horseshoe, you're supposed to like line up the grooves and then just pop it in is how people always discuss it. Just pop it in, just pop it in, just line it up, pop it in. Okay. So I managed to get it in, but that was me finagling with it for a bit. The first thing I'm gonna offer you all are some tips on how to deal with a captive bead ring. The first tip I have to offer is wear like medical gloves, like these little rubber gloves, because they offer you more like tackiness. So then that way your fingers aren't getting sweaty. And if you're like me and you're trying to change your jewelry and you get frustrated, every part of your body starts to sweat and it makes it even more difficult wearing gloves really helps with changing any piercing. It could be any kind of jewelry, not just a captive bead ring, but I have found that if you wanna change a captive bead ring or any jewelry, use some gloves. I've had these for like three years now, so no, I didn't get this during the epidemic when there's a shortage. This is my one and only pair for jewelry changing. Another tip I have to offer is don't do this over a sink. I don't know why we all tend to change our jewelry over a sink. Like why do we gravitate toward the sink? It's like the most dangerous place for changing a piercing because without a doubt, jewelry's gonna go and it's just gonna go right down the sink. I cannot tell you how many times I have lost some part of a piece of jewelry because I was stupid and did it over a sink, didn't pull the stopper up and it just went right on down. So don't do it over a sink. Also put like a towel down or even just like paper towels down. Like I said, even if you don't do it over a sink, there's gonna be that chance where the bead just goes and just pieces out. And if you've got a towel down, at least you might be able to find it a little bit easier. Again, can't tell you how many times I've lost a piece of jewelry here in my filming room. It's fallen into a rug right here. I'll never find it. Just put a towel down. Okay, so those are just a few little tips. If anyone else has any tips on how to change captive bead ring or just change jewelry in general, leave them in the comments below. So now, the methods of changing your captive bead ring. My preferred method is with your hands. So just putting your gloves on and going for it. So this is the without pliers method. So removing a captive bead ring can be tricky dependent on your piercing. The only times I have ever had captive bead rings in my piercings was with my daith, duff, and my conch. 
Those are the only ones that I've ever had them with. Honestly, I don't know how I got my day stuff one out so easily the first time I did it. There's a video, you should go watch it. I honestly don't know how I got it out so easily because that is such a tight space and it's just like, I guess I just pulled into oblivion and it finally came out. No idea. Conch is a whole lot easier because it is on the outside or what I consider outside part of my ear and it just makes it a whole lot easier. So removing it, I find is a whole lot easier process than putting it in. I wouldn't even attempt to put a captive bead ring in to my death stuff because I just, I feel like the ball would just go in my ear at that point. So what you want to do is you want to get a good grip. Again, that's when those gloves are gonna come in handy. They're gonna offer you a better grip even if you start to sweat because you're getting frustrated with the whole situation. You gotta get a good grip. Once you have a good grip on the bead, so the actual part that's gonna come out, you have to pull down with some force. And again, it's a whole lot easier for me to show you like right here when it's not attached to any body part. It's a whole lot easier for me to show you yanking it down than it would be in a piercing. However, I have said that I don't like captive bead rings and I'm not gonna put any of my piercings through it. Actually, the only one I'd be able to put it through is my conch and my conch is like my sweet little baby that never caused me any problems. So I'm not gonna irritate it for <laughs> these purposes. So if you came here looking for me to actually show you how to change it like in the piercing, sorry, it's just, it's just not happening because I don't like them. So you need to get a good grip on the bead. You also need to get a pretty good grip on the jewelry. Now when it's actually in your piercing, it's a little difficult to do. So you gotta just find the best position in, you know, whether you grab this front part right here and then the bead, you just gotta find what works for you, what feels best for you. I don't think I should have to say this, but I'm going to reiterate it. If the removal of a jewelry hurts, stop. Don't continue. You're gonna cause a whole lot of damage to the area. Just wait it out. I know we're all in quarantine right now. We're in self-isolation. We can't go see our piercers and it's the most heartbreaking thing ever. But if you're in quarantine and you're trying to remove cap and bead ring and you find that you can't just leave it until we can get back out there because you're gonna end up doing more damage and causing more issues to your piercing than if you had just left it alone. So the cap and bead ring should pop out if the appropriate force is applied. Should be in the operative word there. So what you do, you grab the jewelry, However you can, grab the bead and you just have to pull. You know, maybe a quick little motion, slow, steady wins the race. I don't know, whatever floats your boat. I find that a quick tug is the best means. I can't even get the bead back in, there we go. So yeah, these are just difficult. I'll try and show you an up close of me doing this. So you have your bead. Look how tiny that sucker is. So you grab the jewelry however you can, you pull on the bead and it should pop out. But if you notice, I like grabbed the whole thing when I just did that, so pain in the butt. That's why I don't mess with these. To get the bead back in, you have your hoop, you have your bead. It's hard to see, because it's tiny. You'll notice there are little grooves on them. What I do, this is my preferred method, get at least one groove onto one of the horseshoe ends. Then you line up the other one, and you just kind of push. There's a whole lot of pushing and pulling with these things. Whoever invented a Captain Bead ring is a jerk because they suck. Once they're in though, they're pretty good, but otherwise they suck. Basically just a lot of messing with it until it gets in there. There's no pretty way to insert or remove a Captain Bead ring. I mean, you're not going to look pretty, especially if you've got like a septum. It, you're going to look like you're picking your nose. So get past that of being like, oh my God, this looks like awful, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. They suck. Seriously, whoever invented a captive bead ring, you suck. When inserting a captive bead ring, try not to move it too much. Like once you've got it lined up and you know it's lined up, just work with the space you're in. So the other method is with pliers or with jewelry expanders. I do not own a jewelry expander. I really should get one just to have it like in my piercing arsenal, but I don't. Maybe I'll order one. But with pliers, this is usually a preferred method if you have larger gauge sizes. So usually like a 12 or 10 gauge and up. You don't really need these for 16, 18, 14. It's just not necessary. So two ways for pliers. One, you can grab the actual circular part of the jewelry and that can serve as a grip for you to pull. Or if you have the smaller pliers like not these big monstrosity looking ones because there's no way that's gonna fit into this ring but what it can do it can kind of serve like a jewelry expander and you would put it into the hole open it up just a smidge 
so that it would release that tension and then the bead would drop. Supposedly that's how that's supposed to work. But because these pliers that I own are far bigger than the diameter of this hoop, I would not be able to do that. So I would probably just grab that and serve as a grip for me to pull down on the bead and get it out. But that is why I don't like pliers. These things are massive and I feel like my ear would just come off with them. So I prefer to use the whole hand method. Replacing it, you can use pliers to kind of hold it steady or you can just replace the bead the same as you would with using gloves. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but just captive bead rings suck. They, they suck. They're so pretty. They're so cute. I absolutely love this one and only one that I own. I would love to wear it in my conch, but there are numerous reasons why I don't. Mostly the biggest reason is because I have my three lobes done and the bead will hit the top one so then it looks weird. But otherwise, I love how they look. They're just a pain and they're not worth my time. Some people may find that they are worth their time. I just don't think they're worth my time. Though I would probably wear one in my septum and just leave it. But like, look how pretty this is. So to those of you who struggle with either removing or inserting a captive bead ring, you're not alone. I haven't met anyone that has an easy time getting them in or out. If you are one of those people, congratulations on mastering a skill that the rest of us have not yet because they suck. If you have any tips or tricks to add on how to insert or remove a captive bead ring, leave them in the comments below. These are just kind of ones that either I've used or people I know have used or are like the most common methods to do so. Again, notice I don't have any captive bead rings in right now. A lot of people wear captive bead rings in their nostrils, but then they like never change them and then they put the ball up into their nostril. I personally have tried that before and it just feels weird. So we ain't gonna do that. We stick with segment rings. And again, I apologize for not actually showing you how to insert or remove in an actual Pearson, but I'm just not about to irritate it because this video would be longer than it already is if I tried to do that. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button wherever it may be because I don't know. Even though I do, this is just my shtick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you want to know when I upload and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, Bye guys. Mm -hmm.